At the time of uh, the George Zimmerman case, there was another case involving a woman by the name of Marissa Alexander. She was also using Stand Your Ground as a defense, and I would like to clarify, eventually the George Zimmerman uh, uh, defense decided not to use that as a defense. But Marissa Alexander had used a gun and fired it at the ceiling when she felt that her husband was a threat. Now, uh, she was estranged from her husband. She had shown up to the home that they once shared to gather some of her belongings because she believed that he was not there at the time. However, when she showed up, they got into an altercation. He was yelling at her. He threatened her. And as a result, she ran to the garage to get into her car and leave. Then she realized that she couldn't get into her car because she didn't have keys. And since she felt threatened by him, she grabbed a gun and she shot at the ceiling. She did not injure him. She did not kill him. He is totally fine. However, she did stand trial for that, and the stand your ground defense in her case did not work. So uh, she had to uh, face some prison time as a result of that, and that case actually led to a mandatory 20 year prison sentence. And people were understandably outraged by this, especially since she had no prior criminal record. Um, now, the incredible part of the story, the update that I really want to bring to your attention, is that she will get a new trial. However, uh, they have said that they don't like the idea of her using Stand Your Ground as a defense. So for some reason, people like to say that Stand Your Ground was okay in cases like uh, the George Zimmerman trial, but it's not okay when it comes to Marissa Alexander, a woman who has no criminal record, who didn't even kill anyone. Right. It's, it makes no sense. It makes no uh, the, sense. The, the whole case itself makes no sense to me. And I've been trying to dig through and find exactly what the process is that means that, that she's not allowed or she's not recommended or they're not going to count the stand your ground defense for her case. Nobody died. Is it if she had killed her husband? In this warning shot that she'd fired, if she'd killed him instead, would have would stand your ground have applied in her case? Because I don't really see any evidence about why this is a problem, why she would have been convicted for, you know, and not being been allowed to use the stand your ground. I no. don't understand this. I do want to read a statement from the judge so you guys might possibly get uh, a little bit of clarity on this. Uh, the judge says the following, we reject the contention that the trial court erred in declining uh, to grant her immunity from prosecution under Florida's stand your ground law, but we uh, remand for a new trial because the jury instructions on self-defense were erroneous. But that doesn't even clarify, though, why she can't use stand your ground. It doesn't and clarify. I don't see anybody actually using that. You know, and when we talk about the experience that she went through, about the, the altercation leading up to it, I mean, he dragged her by the neck. Uh, they'd had previous issues of domestic violence in the home. And when she came out and she brought the gun out in the garage, her husband said, Bitch, I'll kill you. And for some reason, that is not considered having to stand your ground in self-defense I mean, when someone is, threatens to kill you. That's a clear case where you feel that your safety is in danger, your, you know, the, your life is imminent, in danger. There's yeah. an imminent threat there. So I like the fact that she's going to get a new trial, but I don't like what we're hearing from the judge at this point. I would like a different judge to rule on this matter because I, I obviously he has some sort of bias if he's already stating that stand your ground doesn't apply to this case. Well, Jimmy? I, I'll, I'll just make a couple of comments on this case is that the, the process prosecutor in this case, same prosecutor in the George Zimmerman case. True. Yeah. Kind of interesting, right? She's able to get this woman put away for 20 years. George Zimmerman, nah, I can't do it. Couldn't pull it off. She didn't have the gift. She's also the same uh, prosecutor who made the statement that social media will be the destruction that's, of society or that's something along those lines. She decided my next quote was going to be that exactly. She was, uh, her name is Angela Corey. Yes. Right, and we all remember her. She's kind of a knucklehead. And uh, we all remember how inappropriate her response was after losing the case. Remember, she was all smiles. She was all smiles. Remember that after losing the Zimmerman case. Uh, so she said that uh, after after the outcry of the apparent racial double standard in this case, which apparent? Are you kidding me? Uh, she uh, she said that I think social media is going to be the destruction of this country. Yeah, it couldn't be a double standard in applying the law that's going to be the destruction of this country. Oh, it no, couldn't God be forbid. inherent racism <laughs> that's going to destroy this country. It couldn't be incompetent prosecutors such as yourself, Miss Corey. That's going to be it's going it's going to be social media. Yeah, that's right. Because God forbid somebody takes a look at what you're doing over there and how backwards it is. God forbid that happens. Let's get rid of let's get rid of another watchdog. Is what she wants to do.
Yeah, I think anyone who really has a real beef with social media, including the government, including. just hates the fact that you can use that as a way to hold people yes. accountable for their actions. You can't do or say things anymore and just get away with it with no accountability. Especially and if, you're a, if you're a government official. Exactly. It, it definitely exposes a lot of government officials, and they're not happy about that at all. You know, and one of the things that, that jumped out at me about this is, remember the Navy Yard shooter, the yes. uh, Aaron Alexis? There was an incident in Fort Worth, one of the prior incidents from his record, where he shot his gun into the roof of, or to the ceiling, I should say, of the person uh, in the apartment above. And the police, they, I think they charged him, they arrested him, but he was not really prosecuted for that. And so we're talking about uneven application of the law across three different cases that we're talking about. Aaron Alexis, George Zimmerman, and now Marissa Alexander. These don't make any sense, and it seems like it's something where the federal government, the Department of Justice, should step in and perhaps set some guidelines or some guidance in some fashion Definitely. to prevent this sort of uneven application that to me seems like a constitutional issue, equal protection before the law. You know, we all should be treated equally before the law, and yet we are not. Obviously, yeah. I mean, this is obviously just one example of that happening, especially the racial disparity in, uh, in prosecution.